you tell it what kind of ISDN interface it is. Unfortunately, we can't receive that from the operating system yet. We're working with a, a guy from Norway, the guy that runs um, ISDN for BSD, writes the entire ISDN stack for FreeBSD and maintains it, uh, something we're not capable of doing. It's a really complex piece of software. So that uh, could be communicated to the uh, interface, uh, to the web, over, uh, web interface as well so that that would automatically be set. Echo canceling, automatically enabled timing, automatically enabled done. So about three clicks and your ISDN card is set up and usable. Same way with analog. Uh, and then the next one is what we're working on currently is the storage system. It'll take the remaining space on a compact flash card since the entire system only takes about 20 megabytes um, and you have a gigabyte card. Oh, by the way, they look at you very funny if you go into a store and try and ask for a 64 megabyte card now. I tried to buy the smallest card that they had and uh, that was a 256. So we figured the storage system could maybe be used since 90% of the card is vacant. So then you'll have little uploadable packages uh, to extend the functionality outside of this memory file system, outside of this closed sandbox, this really controlled sandbox that we're, we're running for stability. Um, the whole system can be backed up and restored with one file. So click up, XO, and restore your XML file, sets up the entire system, all the interfaces, everything. That's what the XML looks like. Uh, really basic. You could also theoretically take out the asterisk core, replace it with OpenZare, and then automatically construe um, enough logic um, or another core, another engine to generate those files. The, the main point being that there's a layer between what you're putting in the interface and what's being given to asterisk. So we only store what's needed and what's set and you end up with little files like this, little bit of definition for your phone, an internal unique identifier. So if you change the caller ID, we're not keying on a caller ID, you can actually find the phone again, um, things like that and the provider and your routing and all these things. Um, it's a pretty complex system. It's pretty small, yeah? From experience, I've kind of noticed that the hardest part of any phone system, right, of the asterisk-based thing is actually connecting to SIP providers. Because some of these guys have, uh, they need outbound proxies, they need domain. It's stuff that I can't figure out, okay? Half the time, it takes, like, it's taken us, like, days sometimes to configure a Druid with a provider or something. So some providers are just that weird. So how do you plan to deal with that kind of situation? Um, question is uh, incompatibilities for SIP providers and connecting to them. Uh, at first we don't notice anything because we only use a handful of providers for testing. But of course as it gets distributed around the internet, people start using it. You get reports, I can't connect to this provider at all. It denies me, it uh, does all these funny things. Then we have to do it um, at a distance and try and debug what's going on there and why it's being refused. Most of the time you can give the name of the provider into Google and asterisk and somebody will have already complained and helped another person out as to how okay. that was resolved. But what I mean is, are you going to have like maybe a drop down list with supported providers or something? Uh, yeah, a drop down list for supported providers we could do. But then it's another question of resources and maintaining that information. And if somebody's happy with a stable version, uh, we're releasing newer versions with new functionality. They're still on version 1.0 and we're on 1.5 and the information that's required for their provider no longer works. They've changed something in their, their scheme or whatever. Um, it's a big question of updating that and sending that information back down the line. So uh, before we do that, we'd have to have a very nice system in place to, to pull in the data, to, to link with some external source to synchronize these things. Um, the system's quite complex and uh, we only have one developer on it. Uh, it is my job, so it's not my, my free time. Spend a lot of time working on this. The main point being, there's no way we could do this without open source at all. No chance at all to be able to accomplish something like this um, without so many different people working on this. There's, uh, like I said, uh, here's the testing and thing, but here are all the packages that make up Ascosio PBX. There's the monowall base, which we derived it from. It's a firewall package. MSMTP's little tiny mail client. Uh, Scriptaculous and jQuery, all of the JavaScript magic, asterisk of course, FreeBSD, um, uh, custom echo cancelers and stuff, all these P 
pieces that different people are working on and, and improving and we're trying to take the best of those pieces and put them together into a solid unit, into something that's cohesive. So now that we have that done, um, uh, that we have this kind of core, I guess, basically this, this 15 megabyte core um, that is capable of, of connecting different types of telephony devices. Uh, we're working towards 1.0 for this to try and actually get people out of using public beta XX. Um, it becomes a little more acceptable if you've removed the public beta tag from things. Um, but I guess Google is doing fine. Uh, everything is beta at Google, and I still use it every day, so maybe beta is cool, I guess maybe we might have to think about changing that. Uh, just keep it as beta the entire time. Uh, we're working on a package system, as you've seen, uh, the slide came a bit earlier than it should have, and a basic API to be able to get lists of phones, uh, get lists of providers, things like that. Also would like to abstract out logical versus physical interfaces so that you can divine, define three or four ISDN interfaces as provider A uh, instead of having to do, f uh, to be able to do failovers, to be able to do more, um, more expected behavior. Uh, if you have a phone system, you should be able to define that these three are all outgoing and it should be able to take care of that for you. You shouldn't know that if you get a busy signal, then, oh, it's very simple. You just have to press star, eight, nine, and then you use the other line. Um, people will never use it like that. Um, another thing that people always complain about uh, is the live account status indicators. You can't tell right now in the GUI if, if you're actually connected to your provider or not. Uh, for some reason, that's unnerving to some people. So we have to work on that. Time-based call routing, uh, call groups, conferencing, all these things, and a live CD. Um, currently, when you install the system, you have to raw write an image onto a device. If you get that device wrong, you could completely erase your laptop, or your home computer, or your mom's computer, or whatever. So we would really like to get a live CD out there so people can hit one button and it's actually a little more sure. Um, the work on this is sponsored uh, full time. Like I said, this is my job working on open source, which is great, but it's not possible without IKT, the main sponsor, and a couple people that have jumped in to start helping us uh, that actually think there's maybe a future to the project that maybe in a couple years mom and dad would like a way to easily connect all these different accounts that they have and all these different sources of information and uh, sources of communication that they have. Um, there are products out there that do it, but they're not as configurable and they're more interested in sell and selling the hardware that it's based on and not the software or keeping the software up to date. So these are some people that are helping us and if you're interested in cooperating with this, of course, say something after the, after the talk. Um, this is uh, not for 1.0, this is more theoretical, uh, really excited if we had a couple more developers and another year of time what we could really do. The first one hits on what, what Druid has done, obviously, with proper API uh, system, with uh, SOAP calls and with uh, building extended services on top of another platform in another language, uh, all, everything being linked together to this as a communications hub. Really interesting, but also not very easy. Um, also not a big audience for that at this point, from our point of view. We would love to be able to install one of these boxes at home. I put in, I plug one in at home, I set it up. My parents do, my brother does, my uncle does. They automatically find each other and encrypt all the links between each other. That's possible. Uh, there's software packages out there that can do that. That's completely doable. But nobody has done it to the point that I would like it where you just plug these things in and you automatically have tunnels between all your different companies or your different workers working in a hotel for a couple days or at a conference um, where you could plug in a box here and automatically have an encrypted link back home without touching anything. So that is really a direction we want to go into. With that would then be clustering um, balance it, load balancing, failovers, all these things. Uh, truly plug and play phone router, that goes without